Donald Landy, Shane Landy and so, uh, wearing number 26 is D Quinn. The referee is about to throw in the ball. Trim are playing to the hospital end and the game is on. Uh, Sean Fitzgerald in possession kicks a high ball, a little bit too far there for Owen O'Connor and full back there for St. Pat's Dave McQuillan comes out and picks it up. He's well tackled though by um, Aaron Lynch and the ball ends up on the sideline on the stand side of the field for the first sideline of the game to St. Pat's. Trim are playing towards the hospital end as we said. The wind is blowing if you're aware now and towards the terrace side, not really favouring either side but strongly in towards the tennis, uh, the terrace side. Uh, St. Pat's are on the attack here um, just in the first minute of the game with full forward Shane Landy. He gives it back out there to his wing forward who's um, Nilo Flaherty and Nilo is fouled by Luke Moore and it's uh, first free of the game to um, St. Pat's uh, after just 50 seconds. So St. Pat's are playing to the town end. This free is from uh, towards the, the stand side, about uh, just inside the 50 yard line. It's about 47 yards from goals and uh, number 13, I think Donald Landy is shaping up to take this off the ground. So this is the first chance of the game, just a minute played and uh, off the ground. Landy takes the free, it's curling in, and a beautiful point, first score of the game for corner forward, Donald Landy, um, really good score off the ground uh, to put uh, St. Pat's one point to no score ahead, and the ball is in play already, Peter Brennan gives it short to Sean Fitzgerald, who in from midfield for that, he passes it back to James Torr, and it's back here with Brian Bulger, Brian takes it on in the tackle, but he's uh, tackled by his man D Quinn, back out towards Toher who frees up Sean Fitzgerald. Connor Quick is on the ball now, takes it through the half halfway mark. Connor still with the ball, gives out too high a ball, nearly towards Lynch. Yes, a bit too high in the full back. David McQuillan comes out with the ball, he looked to be fouled, no free given. Um, Dara Lynch picks the ball up, he looks to be fouled and he is fouled. It's a free in from 50 yards out, which Dara has in his hands and gives it off to Dougie. Dougie gives it to Brian Dowling, Brian and to um, to Alan Douglas and Dougie gets to his first score of the game beautiful score from about 15 metres out well, very well worked quick free from um, Kieran Coffey to Brian Dowling to Aaron Lynch to Alan Douglas who scores Trim's first of the game from play and it's one point each and there is 2 minutes 23 seconds on the big scoreboard here at Port Talton ball kicked out well won the middle field by Sean Fitzgerald takes Trim on the attack again ball towards the 50 yard line still going Sean passed it out to Paul Mundy outside him takes on to Dougie Dougie off to Sean Fitzgerald off to Owen O'Connor a little bit too far out he's towards the stand side Lynch he has it a bit far from goals gives a poor ball away Aaron Lynch off to Niall Flaherty for St. Pat's and St. Pat's are on the move now so uh, poor ball but given by Aaron it goes to D Quinn the corner forward who hand passes the ball out there towards the sideline and the sideline is given the ball has gone out over the line uh, big corner forward or big full forward Shane Landy couldn't get on the ball so Teams are just settling down uh, point apiece and uh, it's lively enough sort of start. It's a game where both teams uh, are moving the ball nice and quickly and they're trying to find their men well. So the ball was taken quickly once again and James Trower has the ball coming towards the 50 yard line in his own half. Gives the ball off to Daryl Lynch who's in the same line and gives it off here to Kieran Caulfield who gets the ball just under us here in the terrace. Coffee gives it the middle towards uh, Gerard Juan. Gerard's moved out from his cornerback position because he's following his man. Lovely three pass there between the trim lads. Daryl Lynch carries the ball through the St. Pat's, gives it to his brother Aaron. Lovely ball in towards Aaron, fumbles first time, picks it second time. He has Sean Fitzgerald free outside and trimmer 30 yards from goals into Dougie, 21 yards out to Owen O'Connor, 14 yards out. Great shot, great save by the keeper. Blacked out to Kieran Caulfield, straight. Great score from Caulfield. Lovely chance from Owen O'Connor, right inside, but a brilliant save by Philly O'Brien in this St. Pat's goals. And it looked a certain goal for trim but a brilliant save by a huge keeper in goals but uh, only did nothing wrong keeper made a brilliant save dropped back to Kieran Caulfield and St. Pat's had regathered and there was three men across the line so he did the right thing by tapping it over the bar so Trim lead by two points to one with uh, four minutes gone first half Connor Quigley on the ball gives a beautiful ball to Lynchy Lynchy's 21 yards out goes for a kick he shouldn't really went for it was well blocked by his marker and number 10 Barry Mooney collects the ball back there now it's with number five who's Kieran Sullivan Kieran Sullivan out to centre back Darren Hagen Hagen 
looks a, looks a, a veteran of the St. Pat's team, carries it through and Munners fouls him there for a free to St. Pat's. So we get a bit of commentary here from John Andrews who is video in the match which you might see a deferred showing later. Ball kicked poorly by Pat's and Jerry Dwan wins a lovely ball in the full back line for Trim. Pass it to Dara Lynch, approaching the halfway line, beautiful solo by Dara. Gives it off to speed merchant Kieran Coffin who misses the ball first time, gathers it again, gives it back to Dara. Dara's on a lot of ball early, he gets inside the 50, he looks out, he gives it to Connor Quigley who's also on a lot of ball. Connor slows it down a little bit, he comes across back out towards the 50 yard line, gives it across here towards Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald trimmer going a little bit backwards at this stage. Now they move forward with Fitzgerald to Quigley to Douglas, out to Kieran O'Rourke's first touch of the game. 21 yards out but very on the stand side. Cuts in really well, uh, Rorke. A beautiful ball in towards Paul Gully. He's been now inside. Trim could score a goal here. Just over the bar. Lovely play by Trim once again. Great movement. Everybody wanted the ball, got the ball. Beto had a little chance. He tapped it over the, the bar with his two hands. If it was a little lower, it was in the net. But we'll settle for the score at this stage. So it's three points to Trim. Uh, one point for St. Pat's. There is six minutes gone in the game. And the kick out comes long again from St. Pat's, which is not working that well. James Torr comes towards it. He let the ball go out over the stadium, which he does. And it's going to be a line ball to Trim inside their own 50 yard line. Tohar gives the ball back to uh, Peter Brennan. Peter, the keeper, gives it off to Luke Moran. Um, Luke uh, gives it off there to Jerry Dwan. Trim working from the back. Dwan takes it through the tackle. He's at the midfield. He nearly overcarried it, but he got away with it. Gives it off to Dougie, who's playing a fine match today. And just as I said, he gives the ball off badly <laughs> to number 14, Shane Landy, who's dropping deep for St. Pat's. St. Pat's on the move here again. Um, oh, but a poor ball by Pat's. And Kieran Caulfield picks it up very easily here. Caulfield towards uh, uh, Only Connor. Only takes a hard hit from the centre back. Could be a little word for the. Or not to send her back, it's number seven, Martin McKenna. The ref is having a word with him. Only is down, Trim want to take it quick. The ref is having a word with uh, number seven, Martin McKenna. Is he taking his name? He looks to be. Um, John, a very lively star from Trim. They're playing lovely open football up front. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams are playing, playing a fast, lively ball. We are very good when we move the ball quick. When we slow it down in the middle of the field and pedestrian, our forwards are not getting, not getting the chance. But when we move it quick, we're very, very good. Just a, a word. Welcome to the first production from Reds Radio. <laughs> That's from the chief executive. So, James Torr is this ball in hand. He might have a shot at this. It's um, outside the 50-yard line. The wind, as we say, is blowing from us, if you're aware and have from the terrace side towards the stand side it's a bit swirling there looks like there could be a shower at some stage the sun is shining now Tower lines it up 60 yards out hits it poorly out and wide for Trim for Trim first wide of the game uh, Toher's first wide uh, and maybe he should have played it off a little shorter there it was a bit too far but he didn't strike it with his usual fluency so keeper Philly O'Brien kicks the ball out there short one this time but it's won by Kieran O'Rourke, but just doesn't hold on to it. And it goes back here to David McQuillan, who's in, inside his own 50 yard line. Gives a poor ball to Paul Mully, who's tackled again. Is that number seven again? No, uh, no seven, seven is this side, but it's number five, I think, Kieran Sullivan. Um, Sullivan is a strong name in the St. Pat's, the Mullen area. Johnny Sullivan was a stalwart of St. Pat's for many years, and his sons, Peter and Cormac, all stalwarts of Mead football. I'm not sure if uh, Kieran Sullivan is anything to. Uh, Johnny, but the ref is going to take Kieran Sullivan's name, uh, Paul Mundy, he hit him high in the face there and Paul Mundy is still down just at the stand side of the field and it will, it's another, it's a, it's a yellow card all right, it actually is for D Quinn, the, the, the corner forward, he is D, that's what's on the, it's not, we're not nick, nick, name him or anything like that, he is D Quinn, uh, D E E Quinn, so uh, ball in hand with uh, Dougie, who is on, almost on the sideline, under the stand side, on the 50-yard line. So he will be just going for a pop pass here because uh, it, it, the wind is kind of cross-field and he hasn't a breeze of hitting it, uh, pardon the pun, he hasn't <laughs> a, a breeze of hitting it towards the goals with this one. So Mullers is up, he did get a nasty little shot there. Um, first ob observation here is a trim look a much younger, fresher team, John. They are, yeah. We are, like we, we average age of our team is about 24, I think. Uh, Pat's come down from senior uh, two years ago and they've been struggling in the intermediate, but they seem to be an older team. All right. played off into towards Lynchy. Dougie didn't pop the ball. Lynchy has Brian Bulger, believe it or not, outside. He's foul inside. Penalty. It's a penalty. I think it could be a penalty. if it, I, He was inside the large. That should be a penalty. Ref is pointing to the 14 yard line. 
He is only given the free, but the man was fouled inside Lynch. the large par- parallelogram, which is a penalty, but it's not given. Lynch was nearly on the, on the small square line when he was fouled, pushed on the back, clear penalty. Can't, I don't know what, what that referee is looking at, but that is a clear penalty. So Lynch will have this tap over free from the 14-yard line, on fo- well, just to the left-hand side of the goals. Lynch should be no problem for him, and he scores his first one of the game um, uh, for his first free Trim a bit unlucky not to get the penalty, but they're keeping the scoreboard ticking. It's four points for Trim, one for St. Pat's, ten minutes gone. Trim in the ascendancy at the moment, no real advantage win-wise. Philly O'Brien, huge man, about six foot four in the goals, kicks a poor kick out to Paul Munley. Munley grabs it quick, he gives it to Oni Connor. Trim on the attack again, gives it to Dara Lynch. Dara's 21 yards out, left-hand side of the post is he fouled again, he gives it off to Aaron. Aaron usually gives to Dara, or Dara usually gives to Aaron. Uh, Dougie on the ball. Gives a ball into a non running uh, Connor Quigley, who looked to be fouled, but um, Pat have the ball coming out with the veteran looking centre back, Darren Hagen, who takes the ball into Dougie and he's tackled, but gives it back here towards a corner back, Shane McGinty. McGinty kicks a left footed ball, Jerry Dwan's on the ground, it's very well won in there by corner forward, um, Donald Landy. Donald, really well tackled by Quigley, fantastic tackle, dispos- or by Jerry Dwan. Uh, Brit- oh, Jesus. Uh, Kieran Coffey give a hospital ball to Conor Quigley there and nearly got him killed. But the big midfielder, Horik Nulty, comes away left foot for St. Pat's. St. Pat's in the middle of the field with the ball out toward full forward Shane Landy, who is playing a bit further out. Gives the ball off there to Mark McKenna, the wing back, who has a shot at goal from a long distance out. The ball bounced in front of Peter Brennan, harmlessly into Peter's hands. Gathers the ball in the small square, gives it off nicely to Rocky. Trim really looking, the dominant team in this match. They do start games pretty well and they're doing it again today. Moving the ball really well hand, through the hand now with Tor inside our own 70 yard line. Gives it off, a poor enough ball to Tony Connor, but he regathers, chips it up. There's Pino's outside on his own, 14 yards out. He'll have a tap over. Jeez, he kicked it wide, Brian. It was an easy, easy enough, um, easy enough Absolutely. Uh, score there. Should have been a point that time from Bino. He went for the clip it over the bar and he should have maybe hit it stronger and harder on over the bar, but he kicked it wide, unfortunately. So trim second wide of the game. There is 12 minutes gone. Trim four points. St. Pat's won, kick out again from Philly O'Brien, this time it's really well caught, and the, uh, midfielder number 9, Porik Nulty claims a mark, gives it quickly in there towards this, uh, Donald Landy, who looks to be the threat up front for St. Pat's, Landy is still on the ball, he jigged around Jerry Dwan and he gets a shot, and that's over the bar for Landy, it's the second score of the game, St. Pat's having had too many attacks, but they've two points, four points for Trim, two for St. Pat's, Peter Brennan left foot at this time gives a nice ball out toward Jerry Dwan and it goes over his head, fit sloppy. That was a ball that should have been grabbed by Jerry, but it gives uh, Pats an opportunity to keep back in this game. But a slack ball from 10, Barry Mooney uh, is given straight to James Torr playing the centre back position. James has two runners ahead of him, Sean Fitzgerald and Kieran Coffey. James is still going with the ball, he's still with it, 50 yards now from, from the Pats goal. On to Coffey, Coffey cuts in towards the left, he has his shot and beautiful score. Score from Caulfield, gorgeous footballer Caulfield, second point of the game, trim five points and Pats two, great carry by Tohery, two men either side, gave it to the right hand side to Caulfield who cut in across the middle to his strong left foot and struck it from 30 yards over the bar, clean between the posts. Philly O'Brien long again towards midfield, it goes over Dara Lynch's head and it's gathered there by the centre forward, uh, Neil O'Flaherty, the captain goes at Tohery, doesn't get by Tohery though, Tohery looked to dispossess, doesn't foul. Flaherty on the ground trim almost dispossessed again 13 um, Landy has it again but Brian Bulger comes out in front of 30 D Quinn but doesn't get it but Quinn doesn't get it either and Dara Lynch picks up the remnants and it gives back to uh, Brian Bulger who's inside his own 14 yard line and gives it off to Paul Mundy who's dropped deep to take this ball out of defence now Quigley has it on our own 50 yard line he's carrying the ball through he has coffee and free again on the side takes it into the tackle oh lucky to get a free Quigley and he will move it quickly gives it off the Caulfield this time Caulfield inside the 70 yard line with his left foot on the right hand side gives a lovely hand pass into Dougie who bursts through the tackle he has only ahead of him Dougie finds Lynchy this is a certain point over the bar great score by Trim Lynchy second first from play beautiful score no miss passes from Trim quick ball from Quigley to Caulfield to Dougie who's having a great match centre forward onto Oni Connor tap over 
point for Aaron Lynch and it looks very easy when Trim get into those positions. Trim six points, St. Pat's two, 14 minutes gone. I hope you're all enjoying this first Reds TV Reds radio, radio production. Brilliant catch by James Torr in the middle of the field. Long kick out, not working for Pat's. Quickly gets it, gives it to Dougie on a lot of ball. He's giving the man at centre back an awful roasting. He's, <laughs> he's 50 yards out, gives it off to the wing to Kieran O'Rourke who's inside the Trim 50 on the stand side. Takes on number five. Rorkey with the ball, still goes through, still Rorkey 14 yards out. Look, played for the free, got I the free. Rorkey. Beautiful play by Rorkey. There was three, uh, great play, great three play, Pats men around him, played for the free, got the free. Uh, Lynchy will have a 21 yard free, a little bit to the left hand side of the post as you look at the hospital end in Navin. And there's 15 minutes, 15 gone. There will be a water break after this. There hasn't been one in. Well, Paul Money was injured for a sec. Lynchy should make this seven points to two. He's got two points already. He has uh, one from play, one from free. Lynchy is usually father for these ones are easy, easy father for him. He's 14 yards out, left hand side, approaching with his usual jink, taps and hits the post and over. Um, not his best, but it got over the bar for his third point and the water break is called with Trim leading seven points to two, 15 minutes, 40 seconds on the clock and Trim in the ascendancy. Um, John, I, I think... From looking at it, I, I think fitness alone could win this match. Yeah, Trim, Trim look are all very look all very fit. Um, there's some of the, there's a couple of pass out in the middle of the field, maybe it's carrying a little bit of weight, I would say. But um, Trim look a young, fresh team and they look a hungry team as well. And again, I probably say it another ten times during this commentary. When we move the ball fast, we're a really good team. When we slow it down, we're not so good. We're not as effective. But when we get the ball fast into Aaron Lynch, Kieran Caulfield, Dougie's giving great ball off. Bino is making great runs here in the row coming down the wing we're a really good team when we move the ball fast so hopefully we keep doing that um, with 7 points to 2 after about nearly 16 minutes of play so um, very lively from Trim um, I hope you're getting the picture ok it is very difficult to uh, explain stuff when you're not watching it but uh, our first go at uh, radio, radio commentary so we, we, we hope it's going ok for you so to run through the Trim scores Alan Dougie has got uh, one point from centre forward Kieran Caulfield both points with the left foot uh, uh, for him Brian Dowling got the for, uh, third point of the game with one that could have been in the net or over the bar went over the bar he fisted it with the two hands jumped high fisted it and Lynchy has got his customary three points two from freeze one from, from play so that's the seven points for Trim uh, two points both scored by Donald Landy for um, for Pats one was a free and one was from play so uh, as we said um, Pats uh, look, uh, should I say, almost a big old-fashioned team. They're, 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 they have definitely superiority in, in height and, and maybe weight, which is not a great thing, but uh, Trim definitely looked the picture here. Um, and please God, 7-2, um, nice nice position to be in. There is a, is there some coming on? There is. Number seven, Martin McKenna, who got a yellow early and looks to be struggling a little from fitness, is replaced by number four, who was to start, Shane McGinty, and he looks to be coming the wing forward here. He'll pick up Kieran Caulfield, and I wish him luck with that. So a kick out there from Pats, one this time in the middle of the field by number eight. Another big, strong man, Kieran Lynch. Kieran looks up. Ball on the 70 yard line, Lynch with ball in hand, gives it backwards here towards the man that's just come on, Shane McGinty. Shane takes it through the 70 yard line, gives the ball off there to midfielder um, Lynch again, who's gone through and kicks a left foot. Lovely score by Lynch, great score, really well played by uh, the midfielder Kier Lynch. He grabbed the kick out, was fouled, gave it back to McGinty, got the return, and he scored that from 40 yards, I would say, with the left foot. So Pats have had about four attacks in the three scores. Peter Brennan gives a dangerous looking ball out which is won by uh, Conor Quigley and he gives it back to Brian Bulger, gives it off to Kieran O'Rourke playing a customary lovely game of wing back. Um, off to Brian Bulger who gets it again, poor ball from Bulger though, it's gathered there by the wing, uh, wing back for Pat, so a bit of fighting spirit to win that ball that Kieran Sullivan. So Sullivan with ball in hand, it was a poor ball given away by Trim. Uh, ball just at the dug outside at, at, uh, of, uh, of the stand and he uh, gives the ball back here to Barry Mooney back in play centre back uh, Darren Hagen with ball in hand gives it off to the big midfielder Porik Nulty Porik left foot it taps the ball in there but Luke Moran should gather this he's just ahead of that uh, big man D Quinn 
Luke t ticks around, should have gathered it second time, he doesn't. And it's a line ball which I think should be to trim, but the, oh, the linesman's given it to, to Pats, but um, we won't talk about controversial line balls today. <laughs> ball back out towards uh, the centre forward again, and captain Neil O'Flaherty. Flaherty takes it through, he's fouled by Tower. Uh, he wasn't going too far there, but Tower definitely fouled him, and it's a free, which is an easy enough uh, free for Donald Landy, which is 25 yards from goals, we keep in the yards, not the metres, he's 25 yards from goals, right footed, just slightly to the left hand side, terrace side of the goals, ball in hand, he's going to take the free, if he's a good free taker, this is chicken father once again, and Landy does that easy enough, so that's another score, the first two scores after the uh, retake have been two, St. Pat's have Trim have got them back into this game, so what, seven points for, say, for Trim, four say, for St. Pat's, the clock is stuck at, at the water break time, so I, I actually didn't do my stopwatch, so long, long ball this time. A brilliant kick out from Peter Brennan. It goes over the head of Kieran Coffin and he gathers really well. He's two inside him. He is three inside him now, and he has Daryl Lynch who came in support from the half back line. Lynch has it back to Dougie, getting on a lot of ball. Paul Mullers is free inside. Dougie goes at eight, six every time he goes at him. He does well. He chips the ball out to Paul Mullers. Back to Daryl Lynch on the 21. Daryl goes, come up with his left foot and loses possession, and nobody near him, Daryl. And then Daryl fouls Kieran Lynch and uh, Trevor Lynch. Pats back into this game now with sloppy sort of play. Only Connor fouls number two. Adam Byrne still ball in the, within the 50 yard line of St. Pats and he plays it backwards for um, to his wing back there, Kieran Sullivan. And Pats play this ball out. They're getting back into this game. Gives it back here to Kieran Sullivan who's now through the trim 70 yard line. Gives it off there to full forward Shane Landy. Landy back to um, Neil O'Flaherty, the centre forward again, gives a little ball in to Ward's 26. D Quinn is on the ball, got ahead of Brian Bulger. D Quinn with the ball back to Landy on the 15th. They're throwing the ball around the place for Lee to get their hands on the ball. Kieran Lynch, big looking ball coming in from 50 yards, finds the man inside. Inside Brian Bulger's Neil Flaherty, scores a goal. Brilliant goal by Flaherty. Brian Bulger was looking at the ball, Neil Flaherty, ball straight into him, at the square, took it round Peter Brennan and slotted it past um, Peter, no problem, to level the scores up here, 1-4 for St. Pat, 7 points for Trim and out of a, a, a position of total ascendancy Trim now are only drawing this game and St. Pat's have started this second quarter very, very brightly and they're on the attack again, ball to D Quinn, he is Landy outside him, he's in at the 21, he carries the ball, D Quinn to put Pats ahead and he does that, Trim D that. Quinn. We're, we're absolutely asleep since the water break, all of the scores we got with our pure lasers, lazy fouls, and there's a man run through the middle for the first point, and then Brian Bulger watching the ball rather than his man, drifted off him and he buried in the back of the net, we have absolutely been asleep since, since the water break. So, from a five point lead, Trim are now one point down, and Peter Brennan gives a terrible kick out to Toro, who fouls his man again, and he going the book this time. It's a second foul in very short space of time. Bad kick out by Peter Brennan. Went over James Toro's head, gathered by Landy again. Toro drives them to the ground, certain free. I'd be, I'd not, I, if the ref's doing his job, he could have a word with Toro. It's, it's, it's a second foul inside five minutes. The Pats fans are roaring for a card, but there isn't a card. And uh, Landy, it's not, it's a left footer now standing up to this. And this will put Pats two points ahead. Free by Shane Landy with the left foot. And Shane takes the left other ones, Donald and the other ones. And from a position where, as I said, where we were two ahead, we're now two behind. And there's 20 minutes gone in the first half. And Trimmer shook, uh, shook. And bad kick out again from Peter Brennan. Goes straight to Shane Landy and his brother Donald is in. Donald! Oh, Peter! <coughs> Excuse me. Peter has redeemed himself with a marvellous save. But the ball has gone over the bar. And um, a brilliant, brilliant save with a very poor kick out. That's Donald Landy's 4 2 from Freeze. Trim 1 7 2. Seven points behind. Pats are 1 7. Trim 7 points. Peter Brennan's last two kick outs have been terrible. He's gone long this time and doesn't go long well. It's won there by. Oh, but Kieran Coffey got it very luckily. Trim on the attack. He's, uh, Kieran Falky gives it in towards Alan Douglas. Now Trim will have will show what they made of. Dougie is in through at the 21. Left footed Dougie. Over the bar. Nice score by Dougie. Just what Trim needed when they were looking behind. 1-7 Pats. 8 points Trim. 20 minutes gone. And Trim needed that score very badly. They looked the better team. 
and they've allowed um, Pat back into this game with some very sloppy defending and very sloppy goalkeeping. Ball is kicked out by Philly O'Brien badly. Brian Dowling has the ball, gives it back to Kieran Caulfield. Anything Caulfield does, he's done very well today. Caulfield to Dara Lynch, Dara back to James Toher. 1 7 for Pat, 8 points for Trim, or 2 points behind Toher plays him. Nice ball in towards Ole O'Connor, but there's 3 Pats men around him, and Pats have got a second win here. Um, uh, ball with uh, D Quinn again who's moved out the field trim looking a bit to shabble now ball in towards um, Shane Landy who's out ahead of Luke Morn again uh, back here to Neil O'Flaherty ball in the middle of the field Neil gives the ball back to centre half back Darren Hagen Pat's holding possession now ball out with the sub uh, Shane McGinty who's done nicely since he came on he's been tackled and fouled by Kieran Coffey but there is advantage played uh, advantage disallowed now so it's it's still in play with St Pats they're playing the ball around the middle of the field Shane Landy is out around the middle of the field he's going in and going out ball played in here towards uh, D Quinn again he's got inside Brian Bulger again but D Quinn is in again and this time he taps it over the bar um, and we're in trouble in the full back then I'm afraid but um, D Quinn has scored his second score of the game um, got inside Brian Bulger there and he hand passed the ball over the bar to put three points between the sides again St Pats that's one eight, trim eight points, and from a beautiful position, trim have allowed it drift very, very poorly. Brilliant kick out by Peter Brennan. Every time he goes long, he finds Kieran Coffey. Coffey's inside the 50 yard line. Coffey's still going. He has Lynchy outside him. Coffey to Lynchy. Lynchy will have a shot at this over the bar. Beautiful score by Lynchy. Great kick out. Um, we might as well praise the good with the bad. Peter had two terrible kick outs, but that was a class, class kick out to, um, to Kieran Coffey and Trim are two points behind, 1-8 for Pats 9 points for Trim a couple of subs warming up for Trim we are in a bit of difficulty when Pats kick the ball in long uh, so ball kicked out short by Philly O'Brien there's 23 minutes back on the clock I think that it might be a bit short of that um, if there could be 25 minutes gone, so Pats are 1-8 to 9 points ahead and there's a man down on that side of the field, looks like I think Lynch he could have just um it's the centre back, I think, down Hagen. It is, yes. Darren Hagen is down with a clumsy sort of challenge. Linesman Kieran Flynn is tugged out on the far side. He's going in to have a word with the ref. I think he'll have a word with Paul Mundley. Yes, he does. Paul Mundley will go on the book here. Um, a clumsy sort of challenge, I'd call it more than anything, and put Darren Hagen on the, on the ground. But if the ref is consistent, he'll just give um, Mundley a yellow card, which he does. Um, so the game needs to set a little for Trim. We're, uh, two points behind, 1-8 for Pats, 9 points for Trim. Pats really took this game by the scruff of the neck in the second quarter and scored 1-4 without a try. Um, and the ball is kicked down here towards uh, Turkey again for his Pader Talon who's on the... Um, the Pat Seaman is still going through and he's deemed to have overcarried the ball and it's a free trimmer lucky there. That, that was a bit, bit harsh on Pats to be very honest. Toher was tackling Turkey. Uh, who has come on the um, Pats team uh, we missed him coming on he's Pader Talon and he's been effective another big man too doesn't look that mobile but a big big man so ball is played back to Peter Brennan in the trim goals he passes it out here trim working from the back with Luke Moore who takes it to the D he gives it on there to Jerry Dwan Jerry gives it lovely to Adara Lynch who's tackled high by 10 Barry Moody I don't know if this is another yellow I think it could be Barry Moody that was a high tackle on Dara Lynch there's a lot of yellows in this card tri or in this yellow card in this game this is uh, Pat's third I think yes Paul, uh, that's a yellow there for Barry Mooney so there he is a yellow they took off the other guy with a yellow um, and they have D Quinn with a yellow and Trim have Paul Mooney so tri uh, free for Trim Jerry Dwan kicks it back to Peter Brennan in the goals Peter is out at the D and he gives it off to full back Luke Moore Luke takes it on towards 14 he gives it off to Brian Bulger Brian with the ball gives it off there to Connor Quigley who we've worked now through the 50 yard line Jerry Dwan is free on his right hand side and Jerry takes it up towards the halfway line and Trim attacking the hospital goals gives it to Dara Lynch getting on a lot of ball Dara back to Squiggles there Connor Quigley in the middle of the field Squiggles back to Sean Fitzgerald who hasn't been on the ball for a while effective running gives a ball nicely in there towards Brian Dowling must win ball but it's tipped away there 
and it's to be it's tipped away by the sub um, 19 who is Shane Byrne who's Mark and Brian and it's a sideline ball to Trill ball given back by Brian to Dara Lynch Dara on to uh, Connor Quigley Connor approaching the 50 yard line down the middle of the field he's held at the 50 yard line back to Dougie who came outside him ball fit, still now 60 yards from the St. Pat's goals Dougie attacks at the man gives it to Torres up there Torres still at the 50 yard line trim off and made inroads uh, Sean Fitzgerald with the ball takes it through the 50 on towards Sean is still carrying this is what he's good at he's at the 21 he's still going oh he gives it slip past the Lynchy which was taken away very nicely by fullback David McQuillan who kicks a long ball there towards a ah, brilliant take there by Luke Martin brilliant in the uh, good morning or, or Luke Moore Luke Martin is done there uh, off to Connor Quigley a trimmer on the attack again ball inside the 21 Tony Connor takes on his man oh and he has Brian inside oh Brian is it should have gathered the ball ball was across if he gathered it it was an open goal but he just didn't gather and it taken out there by St. Pat Trim looked very promising in the full forward end but they must hold the ball ball back by Kieran Lynch the Pats are playing playing the ball around still in their own half Trim have had a couple of chances they didn't convert now still 1-8 for St. Pat's 9 points for Trim there's about 2 minutes left in the first half the, the clock went down here in Navid Pats are still passing the ball out centre back um, Dara Hag Darren Hagen who's well settled into this game after sluggish starts gives it off to McQuillan at full back who came by him ball still in the 50 yard line back to Hagen Hagen takes it towards the 70 yard line through the midfield nobody tackling him Hagen still on the ball punts the ball to Landy who's in front of Jerry Dwan this is Landy who has a good shot at goals but it's wide ball that was going Landy um, who has kicked Pat's second wide of the game but um, he was out nicely. Those landies are quite good footballers. Good footballers, yeah, very good footballers. Very lively in the full forward line. We're, our full back line is, is in trouble with them, uh, um, but then um, hopefully we'll get to grips with them very shortly. They need to. So this has been a real turnaround in this match, and uh, it's probably just what Trim need to see. They need to see somebody that has put the game up to him, them here in, in, in this year, and this is a real challenge for Trim. It's 1-8 for Pats, 9 points for Trim, and we will see what Trim are made for now. So Peter Brennan kicks it out nicely again, this time to James Torr at the half at the 50 yard line. Uh, Jerry Dwan is attacking, gives the ball to Paul Money, but the ball was badly given to Paul Money and it's gone out for a sideline. Trim gone a little quiet. Paul Money is quiet wing forward. Uh, Sean Fitzgerald at part in that last run was quiet for a little while. We do look busy inside when Dougie, Caulfield, Lynchy, uh, um, Bino. Bino and Oni get on the ball. They look lively, but um, we must move the ball quickly. It's a high ball coming in again to the trip back line. Oh, good touch again by Luke Moore. That's two really good wins by Moore. Brilliant catch about two minutes ago and a great fist that time. Uh, uh, akin to Darren Faye sort of with one handed in and um, Trimmer on the attack with uh, Kieran Rowe uh, and we've Conor Quigley cuts inside the 50 yard line still going foul 45 yards out ball was somewhat going away from Conor and he nearly played for the foul but it definitely was a He's foul and it's been now. mounting which is going to leave this a nice easy free for Aaron Lynch uh, 10 yards was given from a free that was tough it's now become easy it's right in front of the goals it's in the D it's 30 yards out uh, again usually easy one for Aaron Lynchy has two from frees two from plays this should make it three frees to play five points for Lynchy um, one eight to nine points this should leave the minimum between the teams towards half half time Lynchy ball in hand, nice kick between the posts for Lynchy's fifth, as we said, and his third from a free one. The minimum between the sides, there is probably a minute left in this first half. Ball is kicked out, the ref doesn't allow it. Was the only O'Brien or only 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 O'Connor was uh, was uh, been attended to, but actually the ref is going to yes allow the kick out again. So the big keeper Philly O'Brien who has got his act together in this quarter and he's finding men with, with kick outs the two big midfielders are a handful for sure and he goes long again but Sean Fitz should get this ball, yes he gathers it ahead of his man, Sean Fitz on to Caulfield Caulfield 
goes down with Jeremy Penny gets it, right footed, not a good ball this time to Lynchy, and the full back is out ahead of him and he kicks it out over the sideline for a sideline to trim, which Connor Quigley looks like he's going to take and gives very short to Dara Lynch. Dara gives it back to Connor. Connor trimmer 50 yards from the hospital end goal. Connor takes it through the tackle. He has Kieran Coffey outside. He's floored by number seven, Absolutely by number four. Floored Absolutely floored. And there's another yellow for Pats. Somewhat cynical now, the Pats. This is their fourth yellow of the game. Uh, Connor Quigley, second foul in a row for Connor, and he was cleaned out of it that time. Cynically by number four, who will get the yellow, the fourth yellow for St. Pat's. He's played a nice game that Shane McGinty since he came in, but he clinically took black oh, it's a black card actually. He's, well, he did take him out of it. So, so Pat's are down to ten men for the first ten minutes of the second half, and I'd say this is the last kick of the first half. And if you can vision this one up, Tohar has taken it with his left foot. It's one of those usual ones, about 40 metres from goals on the right-hand side of the, in the field. Uh, in about 15 metres from the sideline, one that James likes to curl over if he gets good control of it, it's one he usually slots. Kicks it really well and does just that. Score, great Brilliant score. score by Tor. One of those that you can all uh, envisage Tor taking. Hit the black spot with a beautiful free and it is 1-8 to 11 and this will be half-time, I presume. A draw match at half-time, a nice little fight back there by Trim when they really took the foot off the pedal at the start of the second half and in fairness to Pats they ploughed into this game with, with no fear in the second half they had to they were five points behind at the water break so Pats down to f and the ref does blow that whistle Pats are down to 14 for the first 10 minutes of the second half and at half time it is trim 11 points St Pats 1-8 thoroughly entertaining first half here in Port Talton it's